Was that it? <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Yeah, good. Did you learn anything from that failure? <laughs> you should do it the intros. <laughs> what is up, everybody? Welcome back to the In Situ Collective Podcast. On today's show, we're going to teach you how to use failure to succeed. Okay, here's an interesting thought. Failure as a skill. What do you think about that? Yeah, I, I like it. Like, it's something you have to practice. You have to practice failing, right? Some of you might have seen our merch. Like, we have merch that we give to our clients. Um, and the main part of the merch is fail more. And we often get questions. Like, some people straight away are like, yeah, that's so cool. Like, I love that concept. But then other people are like, why do you want to fail? Like, what's the point of failing? Don't you only want to succeed? Mm. But I feel like it's so overlooked that you have to fail to succeed. Prime example, I have a quote here from Michael Jordan, and it is, I've missed more than 9,000 shots in my career. I've lost almost 300 games. 26 times I've been trusted to take the game-winning shot and missed. I've failed over and over and over again in my life, and that is why I succeeded. Mm. I was like, whoa, because he is extremely successful, but we only look at him for his success. We don't ever look at people like that for the amount of failures that they've stacked up to put that little star of success on the top, right? Yeah, And it's not like he was failing, 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 and then just all success. Yeah, it's still he still would there. fail yeah, now. Yeah, there's more failure in that success. It's just those little bits of success sprinkled through all the failures as well. Mm. So I think that you can be like, you can take it two ways. Like you couldn't be weak at failure and let when you fail, you let it derail your confidence, you let it break your flow, you let it slow down your progress. And that is when you're like letting the failures take over your life or your progress. Or you can be strong at failure and you use the stumbles to advance your knowledge, to improve your edge, to learn from what it is and then to win at the next thing that comes your way. So because I feel like the word failure has such a negative connotation around it, right? Mm. Like it only means bad. But for this episode and hopefully for the rest of your lives, I want you to think about being weak at failure or being strong at failure. Mm. And that's why I had fail more. That's why I wanted mm. fail more on the shirts because it's always about win more, succeed more, do more. Just do it like Nikes. Is it Nike? Just do it, yeah. Yeah. So, But no one actually talks about the failures. Like just go fail more and then you will automatically win unless, like, unless you stop. Yeah. So it's just more about just accepting failure as just a normal thing. Not that it's good or bad. It's just a thing that happens. Thing. And it's a practice. It, like you said, it's a skill. And it's a skill that you have to... I guess you could call it like an, any other emotion, really. Obviously, failure brings up a lot of emotions, mm. good and bad, happy, sad, all that sort of stuff. So it's just, again, like any other f- emotion, it's good to acknowledge it, understand it, improve it. And I feel like because it's inescapable, like it's inevitable in life unless you are extremely privileged and lucky to just never fail or maybe pay people hide your failures it's just not something that we learn in school i think is also really important especially in the sense that like you get graded and it's like you have to try you're always trying to win at something in school and no one ever teaches you how to handle the emotions that you experience when you fail Mm. it's just like you are a bad human because you failed because you got a f because you didn't win the track and field race like whatever it is it's like i feel like in school you just get labeled as being as sucking as a human and then it's really hard to break that cycle as an adult because you get taught it at such a young age so it can be scary to try things i think as an adult like for example if you want to get in shape there's a chance that you are going to fail right hopefully you fail a lot of times at like the small steps that you're taking to get in shape but it's a scary thing because you have to tell your friends your family your co-workers your drinking buddies like whoever is involved in your life that you're trying something different and it's almost like if you they see you eating a burger or going out for beers it's like oh you're not trying to lose weight anymore you failed at trying to diet you fell off the rails at going to the gym and that's like it's, all, it's basically public humiliation, which is really hard to persevere when you experience that all of the time, right? 
Yeah, hundred percent. And like go going back to the school thing, it's like when you're at school, you get good grades for the things you're good at, so you don't try the things you're bad at. Yeah. So you don't want to fail, like because you're going to get bad grades, and that's seen as bad. Mm. And like you said, you're seen as a failure. So then, yeah, you go into adult life, and of course, you're only going to stick to the things that are good for you, that you're good at, and unfortunately it's easy to get good at not exercising and eating a lot and being unhealthy. It's hard to do the other things. So it's almost like you could get an F at doing those, but there is like, and that's the thing, like there's no, what is failure when it comes to trying to exercise and eat better? Yeah. I think you've, I don't, I don't want to be, say any certain terms in regards to this conversation, but I think you, like you said, you only fail when you stop completely trying. Mm. Like if you stop completely trying to make any effort at all to do any kind of movement or exercise, then I think that would be a failure. But if you miss going to the gym two days out of four that you're scheduled to go, that sh- you should not look at that as a failure. You should look at it as a learning experience. Like what stopped me from going to the gym these mm. two days? How can I improve on that the coming week and not see it as such a bad thing like you're such a horrible human for not sticking to the program because you're a human still (laughs) yeah and i think last week's episode where you spoke about starting the workout week on a sunday instead of a monday is a good example of that because everybody tries to start their week off right and work out on monday but mondays are just crazy (laughs) yeah because you've just had two days off and you've got to start your life again basically so just by understanding that and working out on Sunday. Sunday instead of Monday it's like you're already ahead and it's not a f- like you've turned that failure into understanding and improving your life so again it's not really a failure it's just understanding a lesson yeah a lesson mm-hmm. yeah understanding you and what works best for you and like some people might have a cruisy Monday and be able to work out on Mondays and that's awesome but not everybody's the same yeah mm. so now that we know what failure is and that none of you guys are failures I have four steps that I gathered that I think will help you manage your failures maybe and ideally in an ideal world help you turn your failure into success. That's yeah. the whole point we're here, right? And definitely if you're somebody that always freaks out when they you know, miss a gym day or has, goes out for a meal and drinks a little bit too much and feels like shit the next day and beats themselves up, this episode is for you mm-hmm. like you just need to it's not do or die it's not all in or all out it's just about learning from those failures and i think that this is going to you'll be able to apply this to every single aspect of your life health and fitness work relationships professional success like every area that you ever have the opportunity to try something and every area where there is the potential to fail at something you'll be able to use these four steps to help you use the failures more proactively. Mm, sounds so, good. shall we get into it? Let's do it. Okay, so the first one is set a failure timer. Not in the sense that you're setting yourself an amount of time until you can fail, like fail in this window, but in the sense that once you have failed, give yourself a timer to feel sad, feel angry, feel frustrated, feel hopeless, feel like you are a failure. Like give yourself a, cer- a certain amount of time. It could be an hour say you didn't get what's a health and fit i'm really struggling with health and fitness um examples this week say that you missed a workout yeah i guess that's an easy one i was trying to be more creative so you missed a workout um and you feel really bad about it you feel guilty you feel like you let your personal trainer down you feel like all hope is lost give yourself an hour two hours 24 hours if you want to just feel sad mad upset with yourself whatever it is and then once that time is done you have to move on you have to forgive yourself forget about the failure because it's in the past now where you can't go back in time and do that workout it's Mm. happened so there's no point dwelling on it Viktor Frankl who has a really great book which I forget the title of but I think that it's a really good human nature book that everyone should should read I'll put it in the description um, has a really good quote and that is between stimulus and response there is space in that space is our power to choose our response Hmm. so this set a time 
set a failure timer is giving you the space to decide how you're going to respond to the failure. Am I going to change something about what's happened in the past to make sure it doesn't happen? Am I going to let this just derail any progress that I make in the future and quit completely? Like if you consciously give yourself some time to think about it, then you can consciously make a choice because I feel like often we fail and then we get so caught up in life that we like make an automatic choice and maybe it's not necessarily in our best interest because it's a subconscious choice and you're like I suck what's the point of trying Mm. and you don't actually give yourself time to sit and think about why maybe you suck maybe it wasn't you maybe it was a bunch of external factors like stress work kids uni whatever it is and then you can say okay it wasn't really me but what can I do to now change the do, what can I do that is actually in my power to change the situation next time? Mm. Just a question on the t- setting the timer. Mm-hmm. How long should I, like, I guess a question would be, my question, I reckon a lot of people listening would be, how long should I know, how long should the timer be and how should I know how long it should be? Good question. Mm. I think it depends on how big the failure is. So if, let's use a work example, if you are, no, okay, I'm trying to stick to health and fitness <laughs> examples. It all say, ties into the same say thing. Say that you are trying to go for a promotion at work mm-hmm. and it's been three months of you working really hard and being really conscious at work and you're so sure you're going to get the promotion and you've like changed things or you're planning to change things financially in your life depending on this promotion and then you don't get the promotion and you feel like a loser, like you're overlooked at work, like you've failed, you've wasted all of your time. In that situation, I would say give yourself 24 hours just to feel shit and mad and sad and think about it, ruminate on it, write about it, talk about it with your friends, family, call people to discuss about it. Whatever it is, just give yourself a a decent amount of time to get over it because otherwise what... I've learnt at uni is if you don't give yourself time to feel the feelings or reflect or be in the moment of whatever the unpleasantness is, then it's going to keep like popping its head back up because you haven't fully felt it and you need to feel it to get rid of it. So in that situation, give yourself more time um, until like it takes practice, but you will get to notice when you are like you've let it go. Maybe it's a smaller failure, like you've missed a workout. Give yourself an hour to be like, oh, I'm so lazy, I'm so stupid, I can't believe I did this, I'm, I suck at everything. Whatever you're feeling, be mad. And then once the timer goes off, you'll be able, you yourself will know if you, that was an adequate amount of time or if you still feel really angry, then maybe you need to kick it up a notch and like write about it. Or maybe you need to phone a friend and talk about it. Because sometimes just thinking about it doesn't clarify anything. Mm. You need to slow it down and either speak it or write it just to help it be more clear. So it's it's sort of an intuitive activity, I guess. But just play around with it depending on... Because this will be the first time I'm sure all of you will ever have done this in your lives probably. Giving yourself that window to feel failure. Um, so just play around with it. Maybe start with an hour or two and if you feel like it's still infuriating after that then change how you're sitting with it and Mm. then maybe you need a bit longer maybe yeah it just depends on the situation and your emotions obviously okay do you think you're going to try it do you think you do enough things to fail lately um yeah maybe not like big failures big failures yeah but i guess the last big failure was probably primal and Mm -hmm. i probably dwelled on that for way too long yeah because you never because it was a i feel like it was a never-ending failure <laughs> yeah we kept trying and it kept failing but do you I think, think i was failing forwards for t- too long mm-hmm. and it yeah got to the point where it cost a lot of money and a lot of emotional stress um that was probably like again i just trying to think do you think if you had of say for example seen a like seen someone about the that failure because it was a life altering failure mm. that you would have moved through it faster yeah I, I i just don't know 
whether I was op- what in the t- in the time or afterwards. Both. Mm. I reckon it probably would have helped to see somebody afterwards, mm. just to I guess get it all out and close that book. Yeah, closure, it, right? And just yeah, because every time somebody talked about a local council or something for probably even now, I get triggered, triggered, <laughs> have <laughs> stress moments about it. Um, but other than that, I, I feel like I've put a lot of time and effort into letting that go, mm-hmm. and just learning how to just take a breath and let it go it's happened i can i can't change it it's happened so stressing about it um doesn't change anything but i think over time that str- those stress moments have gotten weaker and weaker mm-hmm. so it has taken a while but i've gotten over it yeah um i okay. feel like it could sound heartless this set of time of a failure timer as in like it's like suck it up and get over it. Mm. But at the same time, it's also heartless for you to let any failures derail your life and ruin your day over and over and over again. So I feel like it, this this um, technique is in your best interest and it might not work straight away. Like obviously you can't be like, okay, I'm giving myself an hour to feel failure and then after this hour, nothing's going to pop up. Mm. Things are going to pop up still, but that just means that you just need more time to think it through or write it down or sit with it Mm. so that's how you know how long i guess you need and it is a skill it is as well i think you i've got a question but i'm pretty sure the next step's probably going to answer it is it so step number two is to become a scientist okay do you think this is going to answer your question what does that mean once you've made it through your grace period it's time for you to now learn from it Mm. so the grace period is you feeling just feel the feelings because i feel like in australia especially it's normalised to not feel feelings, right? Push was, them down and move on. <laughs> yeah, well, that was going to be my question. Do I try and change in that time period or let it feel and then try and change afterwards? Yeah. So step one, just give yourself time to let it feel. Think about it. Think about how it makes you feel. Think about how you felt at the time, how you feel now, the distance between the feeling at the time, like when you got told you didn't get the promotion and the feeling now, because sometimes we feel like we're going to feel that way forever. But Mm. even from the time that you fail to the time that you are reflecting on the failure, you already feel different. And just think that it's going to progress continuously. You're going to continuously feel different about it until it's okay. (laughs) So step number two is to become a scientist. Um, And the aim of this step is to view your failure through the lens of an unbiased, unemotional third party. So we've given ourselves 24 hours to feel all of the emotions. Mm -hmm. Now we want to get analytical with it and be a scientist. That's why I named it Be a Scientist because we're trying to be unbiased. So for this approach, you need to gather information like a scientist. What happened? How did it differ from my expectation? And then you want to analyze the information. What, why did this happen? What elements of my process might have contributed to the outcome and what underlying insights from the unexpected what underlying insights are there from the unexpected result so this step is probably the best time for you to write the first step if you're writing write like crazy just write i'm so angry i hate this person like how could they do this like why just write furiously this time i want you to write analytically describe what happened in detail like how you thought you were going to get the promotion what your boss said to you, how you felt that day, how you felt afterwards, just write everything that happened like a dear diary, a day in my life vlog kind of situation and then analyse why. Analyse why you think it happened. What could have contributed to this outcome? It is really important here to be cold and emotionless as much as you can. (laughs) (laughs) Um, That's why we want to give ourselves time to feel and now we're going to just be as analytical as possible like... I don't know how else how else I can make it more clear. Emotionless. Um, just be... As if you're just you, going through a movie and watching the movie. Yeah, that's a good example. Yeah. Yeah. Um, just think about it almost like you're writing a story if you need to disconnect yourself from the situation like that more so to help it be emotionless. But sometimes I feel like all the time, I know actually, our emotions... Um, feel like give us a colored lens so Mm. like if you're feeling the emotion of sadness and you're looking at a situation the situation is going to look really different it's going to look it's going to be tinted blue than if you are feeling the emotion of joy 
then the situation is going to be tinted yellow. So same situation can look completely different in two different colors because of the emotion that you're feeling. So get rid of all of the colors. We want it to be gray, plain gray. Look at the situation for what it is. I struggle with this sometimes because I'm sure we all do it, but we try to be like kinder or harsh on ourselves so like if I didn't get a grade that I wanted at uni then I will immediately be like well I did this wrong and I did this wrong and it's not fair because I was disadvantaged in this way and this teacher didn't teach us right like immediately I let all of my emotions determine what my outcome was when in reality maybe I just wasn't trying hard enough maybe I took the test too quickly and didn't slow down and really think about the questions. Maybe I watched the lectures on two speed while I was cooking and didn't pay as deep attention as I do because I tend to try to stack things on top of each other to be more effective, which isn't always as effective. So you have to be just kind of be mean with yourself, I guess, in this step. Mm. Questions? I'll just, maybe I'll wait till the end. I've got an example from clients. Okay. So real world. And we can apply those examples to this. Okay. So step three then. So we've felt the emotion. We have got analytical and written down what actually happened and why it might have happened. And now we're going to time travel into the future. So becoming a scientist requires you to zoom right in on the situation. Now we're going to zoom all the way out. Imagine yourself one year from the day of whatever your failure is. You're in flow, you're celebrating your success, you feel great about life and you look back on the failure and think about what made you pivot. What is the thing that helped you change from following a trajectory of failure to now being in the winning position that you're in now, to having succeeded? Mm. So you have to ask yourself, what actions did you take so this is, we're not, at the, we're not at the success yet. This is looking forward. This is using your imagination to look forward at the success. What actions did you take to make it happen? What changes did you make in life after the failure? And what behaviors, mindsets and routines did you adapt? So this is still, I feel like this is very journaling. I t- probably should have mentioned that at the start, but... Mm. Um, that's fine (laughs) so yeah use these questions and use your imagination you can just use it as a thinking experiment you don't have to write it down necessarily but i think writing is very beneficial yeah i think it just depends on the person or the severity of what you're going through yeah um so yeah use this time i feel like this time travel technique is even good not for failures just for you thinking about how you can get to whatever your goal is in general. So what actions did you take? What changes did you make? And what behaviors, mindset and routines? I think that's the most important one in context to health and fitness. How are you going to get to what you are considering success? Because I think a lot of the time we get stuck in constantly like the the success, but not the actions to get to the success. So we often think about how I'm going to look when I lose five kilos or when I put on X amount of muscle we only think about that we don't think about I'm gonna have to eat 200 grams of protein every day for the next 365 days Mm. okay like the little things like that are the things that are going to help you succeed and that is very important to think about after you've failed because if you don't think about what you're going to change you're not going to change good questions Keep going. Keep going. One more. Yep. Okay. So now we are taking action. Now that we know what, how we're going to get there, what we're going to change to do to get there, we have to do the things to get there. So I think in my experience, the hardest part of coming back from any failure is putting yourself back out there. Mm. It's so easy to just want to hide, not try because we just learned from step one that failure hurts. It feels bad. It's uncomfortable. It's ugly. It can be. It doesn't have to be. So now putting yourself back out there. um, I guess you just (laughs) just have to take action. My advice would be to set a date and time to start the new things that you just wrote down in the previous step. So 
set a date and time to be like, okay, on Sunday at 12, I'm going to start meal prepping and then I'm going to do that every Sunday at 12 for the next 52 weeks. And once you start the ball rolling, obviously there might be some Sundays you miss and that will be a failure, but that's okay because you've started anyway and you know that you can easily pick it back up and keep going. You don't have to go through all four steps Mm. for a small failure like that, but just from personal experience, I think taking action, you have to almost schedule it in your diary because I know that it's really easy to just say, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it next week. I'll do it at the start of the month because it just feels nice to start things from a, a pretty point, mm. like a Monday. Um, so, yeah, if you can schedule when you're going to start taking action for the things you listed above, even better because... All of the information you just gathered is nothing without any action, right? Pointless. You just wasted steps one, two, and three if you don't put anything into action. Mm. And it also doesn't have to be perfect. The actions don't have to be perfect. They just have to be something that's moving you forward to what you just envisioned from a year from today. I I don't, like we've spoken about this in the past, just never miss two actions in a row. Yeah. So back to the meal prep on a Sunday. So if you're meal prepping every Sunday and you miss one, just make sure you get into the next one. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you might miss a few here and there, little failures, but then if you, like you said, if you zoom out and look at the whole year, there's 52 weeks, if you miss 10, you've still done quite a fair few, like 42 out of the year is really good. And that will be more than enough to get you some results over that year. So again, when you fail once, just, don't miss the next one. So that could be a workout if you're working out every day or doing something every day. Don't miss two days in a row. Just make sure you get back in there. Um, even if you're, I think, trying to do the action, but do whatever you can towards that action. I've spoken about this before, like just going to the gym and mm. doing whatever you possibly can in the gym, whether that's two exercises instead of 10, that's fine. If it's meal prep, and you have only got time to meal prep two meals instead of you've still done the action, which is a success because that is doing what you need to do. You haven't completed the whole task, but that's still fine. Next week, you might do all of them or a little bit more because you know you miss, might miss a few the week after. So you've prepped a few extras, but it's just a matter of just getting in and doing whatever you can towards that action as well. So sometimes it can, like, especially if it's a big failure, what life-changing thing it is quite scary to get back in there and dive into the next thing but if you just do a little bit it's not so scary and then the next time you do a little bit plus a little bit more and you can see where i'm going with that just those little bits add up over time again it's not going to make much difference over a week but over a year or two years it's going to make a huge difference and i think people just need to give themselves a little grace and time and just Again, zooming out and looking at the big picture instead of those little tiny failures along the way. Yeah. I also think we did, when Mariana came on the podcast, we spoke about not telling people what you're trying to achieve because then it takes away – it's almost like you've kind of achieved it already. I think in relation to health and fitness, that can be helpful for some people, as in if you have decided that you want to lose weight, you don't – but you're scared of failing you don't have to go and tell everybody that now i'm going to lose weight and i'm going to have lost five kilos by this date and i'm going to run a half marathon by this date you don't have to tell everybody that Hmm. a lot of time a lot of the time when you voice your goals it can feel like you're doing something towards your goals because you're talking about it but you're not actually doing any action towards it you're just saying yeah i'm going to do this and you feel good because people are like wow good on you Hmm. And in some situations, that's good because maybe you need the support. Like maybe the people that are really close to you can support you if you tell them, but not always. So I think that if you don't tell anyone as well, that can also take away some of the fear of putting yourself out there because you're just doing it for yourself and you're just quietly working away on yourself because your success doesn't have to be everyone else's success. Like it doesn't have to be this big announced to the world kind of thing. Mm. But... At the same time, I feel like that's a catch-22 because if you don't tell anyone um, and they don't see when you fail, then maybe it's easier for you to hide behind your failures and not necessarily keep trying as well. So, 
you just have to kind of know what type of person you are and which strategy is going to work in your favor. Mm. That's a hard one. Yeah. Did you have a client example? I did. So um, when I use examples, a lot of my clients reach out and say, why would you t- talk about that? <laughs> this is... And this is a good example because I've had it from many clients. So I'm not signaling one client out in particular. This is just an example from at least 10 different scenarios. Okay. So um, client is absolutely smashing it, meal prepping, exercising, doing what they need to, something happens and then they just have a breakdown and just whether, you know, they just go to McDonald's or go to supermarket and just buy the junk food that they're they love and just absolutely smash it for an afternoon they generally see that as a failure Mm -hmm. and they'll like they'll tell me about it and oh this happened what using those four steps what can we do to get over that one and get back on okay let's say that it just happened that we just went to maccas and if you listen to the last episode, we got a Big Mac meal and we upsized with the nuggets and the sundae. Stupid and the kiosk. Because <laughs> the kiosk manipulated us. And we've gone home and we've eaten it all and now we feel really bad about ourselves. I would say two hours. Give yourself two hours to feel bad. Go throw all of the rubbish from the Maccas in the bin. Have a shower. Go for a walk outside and just think about how you feel. Why you feel guilty. Do you feel guilty? Do you feel like you failed? Do you feel sad about it like what is it that you're feeling two hours that's it once you're done after the two hours you're going to gather the information what happened so did something that day make you feel mad or sad to cause you to go to Macca's and buy all of that food what was it that triggered you to do that after you've been going so well for so long with the plan um and why why was that your choice because it's a comfort thing? Is it something you used to do in the past? Um, Did you just feel like you needed something salty and sweet? Had you not eaten all day? Did you have a poor sleep the night before? Um, Just why? So what happened to trigger it and why why was that your choice? And then step three, travel into the future. What would it look like in one year's time if you stopped letting your boss upset you, which caused you to go get Maccas every second week. Say this happens every, what, every second week, every month maybe. What would you look like in a year's time if this didn't happen? How would your skin look? Would your hair be much nicer? Would you have lost weight? Would you have more energy? Would you be sleeping better? Would you have saved more money? Um, Think about all of the things that would look different in a year's time if you stopped doing this behavior this this quote-unquote failure and then step four take action what are you going to do now to prevent yourself from letting this happen again this is obviously the hardest part this is the part that everyone struggles with even us Um, is it that you need to find a different food to replace when you have to replace the mcdonald's when you have a bad day do you need a like is there an alternative that isn't as calorie dense and isn't as isn't going to make you feel as bad can you when you feel these feelings like when your boss makes you really angry and you just want to go and eat heaps of maccas can you just go for a walk instead can you put can you make a playlist for like i've got a playlist called stop Mm. being sad and every time i feel like i just want to eat a bunch of cookies and be sad i just put that playlist on and maybe i do my hair or i put that playlist on and i go sit in the sun or go to the gym or walk the dogs find something that makes you feel good that isn't mcdonald's or whatever it is because i know that eating these foods makes you feel good in the moment so just try and find something else that makes you feel good in the moment that you can have in your back pocket for the next time all of this comes up to replace that instead Mm. and that's hard because that's a future action like it's not necessarily something that you can once you've gone through steps one two and three it's not necessarily something you can do straight away maybe In the Maccas example, you can delete the... I'm pretty sure Maccas has an order on your phone app. Delete the app. Maybe you... I don't know. Whatever whatever allows you to go and have Maccas, try and change... I'm not very experienced with McDonald's, but try and change those things um, to prevent you from next time falling in that pattern. Does that sort of answer the situation? I think so. Yeah. I think that's a good example I can send to all my clients. Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) 
Um, but yeah, I feel like even like don't feel bad. Mm. Or do feel bad. Feel bad for step one. Feel bad for two hours or twenty four hours. But don't feel like you're not an adequate human for failing because every single human fails. I feel like that is what makes us human almost mm. exclusively. Mm. Awesome. Cool. I think that's all that I have today. Perfect. I, I love that. Um, obviously, if you stayed around this long, you loved it as well. So make sure you share this episode with one friend or family member. We all know somebody that struggles with failure and understanding it and just giving yourself some love and understanding how to get over it is a good place to start and help others. So copy the show link, send it to one friend or family member. It helps them, it helps us, and it grows this community, which is awesome. Uh, if you have any examples of failures that you've come across, especially in that last example, something similar to that, we'd love to hear from you. Definitely. Or if you've got a question for the podcast, you can hit the link in the show notes where you can contact us or submit a question. Both go to the same place, us. So if you'd like to do that, we'd love to hear from you. And we'll see you all in the next episode. Bye.